Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have been providing North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 30 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more Financial Focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. And welcome into Financial Focus, brought to you by the best of the best in financial services, as named by the readers of the Lake City Reporter, eight years and running and celebrating 30 years, serving North Central Florida savers and investors and helping you to detail and then work to accomplish your financial investment and retirement goals. The team from Gulf Coast Financial Services and sister company, Gulf Coast Tax Advantage. CEO and founder John Kirkendall here with us as always, providing us important information and insight into the financial world, helping to uncomplicate the money issues. Now, John, as we are nearing the end of the year, rapidly rolling into the final months in the holiday season, we've got a good program today reminding folks of maybe some year-end planning moves they should consider. It's one of the most overlooked things. People don't really plan their year end. And there's a lot of things that we can do that we need to take advantage of before the year end. So I'm really excited about today's show. I think that there are uh, some things that people will really be uh, excited about, uh, and we'll give them some good uh, input into how they need to plan for year end so that next year will be a better plan for them. Well, I think that the first one on your agenda item, John, is one of the biggest, and we really need to understand the importance of getting an annual review of our progress, a discussion of our milestones, benchmarks, accomplishments, and then setting new goals for the upcoming year, as well as it oftentimes will be of significant benefit to get a different set of eyes on our situation. It can go a long way in uncovering some issues we may not have been addressing. Well, that's right, Peter. I mean, you know, we need to get that annual review of where we are, what we did for this year. Um, and based upon some things that may have happened to us, either job changes um, or, you know, a promotion, more income, a baby, whatever's happening, we can make it some changes to our plan and also to our 401k and other things. So that annual review and to get that second opinion is really important, looking at new risk issues and opportunities that can be undiscovered. And uh, a lot of people, you know, we don't do that. We put off planning for some reason, um, and we need to do more planning. It just takes a little bit of time, especially if you've got a financial professional helping you. And the benefits of that financial professional we've detailed in other programs, ladies and gentlemen, but the Dalbar Institute is a research institute that does studies on investor returns and behavior compared to that of the market. And it has shown for more than three decades of annual studies that there is benefit in working with a financial professional and advisor and improvement to your overall progress and performance. And John Kirkendall and his team there, Gulf Coast Financial Services, keep their doors open and phone lines open if you would like to set up and schedule a complimentary annual review of your plan and your progress. Pick up the phone and give them a call, 386-755-9018. That's 386-755-9018. 386-755-9018. Now, John, in the course of that discussion, a lot of times you're talking about some proactive tax planning strategies as you are going through those annual reviews. It's not what we have. It's what we get to keep out of it, right? That's right. And, you know, one of the most important things is, is to make take advantage of the tax laws that we have because there aren't many and we need to really make sure that we do that. And the first one, Peter, is tax loss harvesting. And, you know, if you've got a loser in your portfolio and you can sell it or, and get rid of it, uh, it'll help you towards the capital gains that you're going to have this year. Plus, you can also take up, off up to $3,000 in ordinary income based upon your tax losses. And I think with the market, the way they've been, we all have uh, some harvesting that we can do. Um, and now is certainly the time that we need to look at that. 
And no one wants to take a loss and no one wants to get rid of a winner. But there are opportunities where if we do both simultaneously, we might be able to avoid or to wash some potential taxation. And those losses, if we don't have gains, do carry over into future years to offset ordinary income. Now, number two on this list of proactive tax strategies to consider at year end, John, something that a lot of folks are actually surprised by, and that is phantom gains that can be created in mutual funds. Care to explain? Well, I think this happened last year, Peter. It it was a situation where, uh, based upon the portfolios and how they they had grown, as the mutual funds sell, during the year and buy back and sell and buy back, they create capital gains and uh, dividends uh, and also some losses. And what happens is at the end of the year, all of that has to be passed on to the individual. So the individual investors. So if your mutual fund did a lot of trading and they ended up getting a lot of extra gains and capital gains, that's gonna be passed on to you because every year, Capital uh, mutual funds have to pass on all the capital gains and the income uh, dividends that have been accrued for that year. And this is something that really can blindside you because even with the most, uh, you know, acute uh, tax planning, that can throw you into another tax bracket without you really realizing it. Yeah. And this is for non-qualified, non-retirement account investment. Yeah, it doesn't happen in in the qualified accounts or the IRAs or the 401ks. But, you know, for those of us who have built up a after-tax portfolio to kind of help us as we retire so that we have spendable cash, this is something that can really hit you depending upon how much you have invested. John, the financial wizards tell us to buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold. But inside of mutual funds, often they do anything but. There's a lot of internal turnover, buying and selling, and that can create that phantom gain or phantom income for us that we ultimately have to pay some taxes on. That's right. And, you know, the the portfolio managers are out to make a gain. The more they make in their individual portfolios for their mutual funds, the more money is going to be invested with them, the better their salaries are going to be. They're not really looking at what it's going to do to you tax-wise. And so when you invest in a mutual fund, one of the things you need to look at is the turnover and how they are managing that portfolio. Next on the list, proactive year-end tax planning strategies, Roth conversions. Now, this may be a little bit of a painful discussion, but uh, short-term pain, long-term gain. Well, that's right. We need to we need to do the Roth conversions. We, that's one thing that's been proven. We should have, you know, we didn't. We haven't had these all that long. They came out after the four hundred one k's and after the IRAs, and so now with that new Secure Act and having to take the money out in ten years. Uh, and the RMDs for us older folks, Roth can, Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks are very important. So now's the time, while the market's down, you're not going to get as much for that stock as you are a uh, mutual fund as you had in it probably, but it can do the conversion and actually creates less taxes because we're going to pay taxes on a smaller amount now. And then as it grows back, We're not going to have to pay taxes in the future. So it's a question of whether I want to bite the bullet and lose a little money now, um, paper money, and then convert over to a Roth, and then all my gains in the future are free. It's kind of like the seed or the harvest thing, you know. Now, we are trying to move through these year-end topics rather quickly, but if you'd like more detailed Mm -hmm. information, uh, of course, there's a discussion that is available on the archive of these episodes at gulfcoastfinancial.net. But John and his team have some advanced capabilities of crunching the numbers on your specific situation. If you would like to see a report on what a Roth conversion strategy may look like, what tax implications, costs, and liabilities it might incur, and what the long-term advantage could be projected out to be. Give them a call. It is often a significant amount of money that you are talking about being able to, to save or build and minimizing that tax liability. So, 
If you'd like to see the numbers for your situation, call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. Now, uh, to another important tax topic, John, one that we do not want to overlook, one of the heftiest penalties that the IRS levies on us personally is if we miss these required minimum distributions. So if we have not yet taken those, we need to go ahead and jump on that one now. That's right, Peter. It's RMDs, as we call them in the industry, or required minimum distributions. And it's a 50% penalty on the amount of the money you are supposed to take out. Now, I can tell you from experience, because early in my career, I had a client who had an annuity, and he forgot to take out his RMD when he reached 70 and a half. It's 72 now. And within six months, he had a letter from the IRS telling him he owed the amount he was supposed to take out plus 50% of that amount. So the IRS does watch this, that they will catch it. It's one of the uh, most, you know, that's the heftiest penalty there is. But RMDs, we have to do them at 72 now. Um, and so there's been some proposals maybe back at 75, but that hasn't been passed yet. 72, we have to take that money out. Um, and there are some advantages and ways we can take it out. We don't have to take it out all out of one account, or we don't have to individually take it out of each account that's qualified. There are some ways that we can look at those and make those RMDs a little bit more effective uh, and leave some of the money invested for other things. So uh, it's something that everyone should look at and be aware of. It's a huge penalty if you don't do it. Now, what if you don't need that RMD, but you are charitably inclined? John, this ah. next one, a, a a very rare. In fact, there are only maybe a couple opportunities for truly tax-free money, and this may be one of the best ones. This is probably the best one I know of. Instead of giving money to your charity, to your church, or to any charity that you support, you can take the money out of your de defined plan or your deferred account and give that directly to the charity from the custodian without you touching it. And it do it qualifies for your RMD, but it doesn't qualify. It doesn't make any income for you. So we can lower our income, still meet our RMD satisfaction. And we can do that up to a hundred thousand dollars, Peter. So it's a great way. I have a lot of clients doing this because they're, they don't need their RMDs. Their RMDs are going to throw them into a higher tax bracket. So what we do during the year is we plan on how we're going to give to the charity, our charities, and then we take that money directly out of the account and send the check directly to the cut to the charity. And you probably get the best parking spot available when you when you do those kind of gifts to to your charities and churches and organizations as well. So it's a win 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 all around. Oh yeah, you can park right up front. Next, John, is if we have not yet maxed out our plans, we're looking for some additional opportunity to make progress toward building up those retirement accounts. It's time to get serious about those year-end contributions. That is right, Peter, because, you know, 401ks especially and, and uh, 403bs, that has to come out of in simple IRAs. It has to come out of income. So we have to do it before 1231. So if you're behind and you've got extra money or you've got money in your savings account and you can defer, afford to defer more of your payroll, then we need to catch up and defer as much as we can um, or put it into a Roth, a Roth 401k or our defined plan. That would be what I would do is we need to look at that and make sure we can get as much money in there as possible. All right. Several more on the list, but tax planning, a big one, ladies and gentlemen, uh, issues, opportunities, strategies for you to take advantage of before the end of the year. Be proactive. Don't procrastinate. Jump on those now. Give a call to Gulf Coast Financial Services. Find out which may apply and be advantageous to you. 386-755-9018. 386-755-9018. All right, John, moving on from just taxes, but to our total financial opportunities and year-end to-do checklist. Rebalance those accounts. Yeah, you know, in the past, Peter, we've talked about the fact that the market was growing um, and our accounts were out of sync because the growth funds had grown more than the more conservative funds. So the aggressive funds, uh, the aggressive stocks were certainly outweighing what we needed in our portfolio. This year, it's a combination of all of it, the bonds and stocks, everything's down. 
So we need to take a look at where we are and rebalance our portfolio based upon our risk tolerance. And if uh, our portfolio is, is risk heavy, then we need to move our portfolio back to be more conservative. But certainly this is something we need to do every year. It's not something that we can just sit in the closet, put it in the drawer, close the drawer and not look at it. It's something that everyone needs to do every year. How about checking rates? Maybe uh, we could save on our insurance. Maybe we could make a little bit more on our savings. Maybe we could pay a little less in interest on debts that we may have. Well, with interest rates going up, it's a little hard to catch, you know, to get a break on interest rates these days. But certainly, you know, if you we need to check insurance rates, all those things that we're paying for, because everything's gone up. And if you're not shopping your insurance or your mortgage insurance and those things, you need to do that every year. Now, rates have certainly gone up. And so if you're in a money market account at the bank, you may want to consider putting that money into a CD or a fixed annuity because they are have a longer, uh, longer term, higher interest rate. Certainly something we need to look at. But, um, you know, in Florida especially, uh, home rates have gone up tremendously on our insurance, and you need to shop that with your car insurance and try to get the best bet. John, we talked a little bit about how rising interest rates had a lot of impact on different aspects of the economy, but another one that is specifically important is if we are entitled to a pension. And this is something that before the end of the year, if we do have a pension choice or decision in our future, maybe retiring and entitled to a pension, we need to check on our pension options and benefits. Well, that's right, Peter. Rates have gone up, so the pensions next year uh, may not be worth as much in dollars as they were this year. And so if you have the opportunity to get those numbers before the end of the year and you're in a position where you can retire, this may be the situation where this year you need to consider that. But it's an individual choice, an individual decision, and it's based on each individual plan. So you need to talk to your human resource director and find out what your payout will be this year and what it will be next year. Interest rates have gone up. They're continuing to go up. uh, And certainly this is going to be a huge effect on these pension plans. A few more here, John. Uh, Review your budget. Check your credit and review your income plan. All of these sort of part and parcel, but uh, some different aspects on all three of those. Well, that's true. But I think the main thing is to review the income plan. We always talk about income planning on this show, and that should be an ongoing process where we look at our income. We try, if you're out, if you're retired, we need to make sure you're on budget. If you're not retired, we need to check the numbers and make sure that the numbers that we're using will reflect how much you're going to need in retirement. Credit checks is something we always need to look for because the interest rate that we pay on our homes, on car loans, other things is always based on our credit check. Uh, And there are issues uh, where credit statements are wrong. We we can catch some things and prevent problems early. Right. It's, It's better to catch it early than it is to catch it later. I mean, you know, if you sit there and don't ever pull it and you got to go back 10 years, and have them try to correct it, it's not going to be easy. But if we catch it, if we do it every year and look at it and see if there's a problem, um, you know, a son who's got the debt of his father or a father who's got the debt of his son. We just had that problem the other day where it was a totally different name. A different, they were same last name, but different middle name. Uh, and we had to have it taken off the credit bureau report. So those are all things that uh, we need to be aware of. Uh, And certainly we need to look at the budget, how much money we're spending, how much money we got coming in um, and where we're either over or under and then adjust the budget for next year. Because if you're off this year, you're not going to be able to use the same budget next year. Set new goals, identify opportunities for the year to come. Don't overspend during the holidays. John, another big one, roll over retirement accounts. Now I know that as we leave old jobs and employers, but also as we reach certain age milestones, these accounts may become available for us to choose and select between better options or at least more closely manage and monitor. 
Well, if it gives us better options and give us better ways to monitor the accounts than, than the 401. And within every 401k plan or every our retirement plan, there is a number that we, when we reach it, we're able to take out a portion of the money and reinvest it, diversify it, uh, get better control of it. And that's something we certainly should look at. Uh, but, you know, the thing of it is, Peter, is we need to consolidate all of these different plans. I mean, if you've worked at four companies and you've got four pension plans sitting out there, which was the case with a prospect I met with the other day, I mean, we need to get more control over these things so that we're not, we, we've got diversity in the portfolio, but also so that we can monitor them and track them uh, and cut the cost. A lot of times we're looking at cost. We certainly should be aware of the cost that we're paying in all these things. John, all of these items on your list about identifying risks, issues, and opportunities. Some of them have a deadline. Some of them are just things that we should do more proactively. The end of the year, close upon us, certainly a great reminder to address some of these things before we get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the holidays. Well, it's better to do, especially the tax planning now, than wait till April and try to do it, Peter. So I, I think that as we move forward, we need to be more proactive in all of our planning because there are advantages to planning now, uh, and there are just a lot of disadvantages to waiting and doing it later. And, you know, laws change, Peter. We may have a, a loophole this year or a way that we can invest this year that it could change. If you take a look at that SECURE Act, we didn't know until December 31st that that was going to be an effect of January 1st, and there was no grandfather. So, you know, laws can impact what we're doing, and if we plan now based upon what we know, then we're certainly going to be better off than waiting. Absolutely. Better to be proactive than reactive when it comes to your finances, ladies and gentlemen. And one of the best ways to be proactive, give Gulf Coast Financial Services and John Kirkendall a call. 386-755-9018. That's 386-755-9018. 9018 386-755-9018. Get your financially focused income plan in place. That is the planning process and the written plan available there as an extension of this radio program at Gulf Coast Financial Services. Again, just give a call 386-755-9018. Have a conversation, set up a time for a convenient consultation, no cost, no obligation uh, with John and the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services. 386-755-9018. John, as always, a pleasure. Thank you for the reminders of these important items to address as we are planning for the end of the year. Thank you, Peter. I think they're all important. I hope everybody out there enjoyed the show and will use some of the things we talked about today. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting GolfCoastFinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature, not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.